this is Ali with Geek Inked, and we're here speaking with acclaimed Canadian author Robert J. Sawyer. I'll just start off by congratulating you on your Lifetime Achievement Award at uh, CanCon. Um, but the fact that you're a Canadian reflects a lot in your work. How do you feel about that? Oh, it's hugely important to me. And when I was starting out, every author I met in Canada told me, don't set your stuff in Canada, that there would be no market for it internationally. And I'm in 20 different languages now. You're right, I did just win a Canadian Lifetime Achievement Award, but I, a couple of years ago won an award for being the most popular foreign science fiction writer in China as well. And the work is embraced internationally. And everybody who said nobody in the States or anywhere else will ever want to read about Canada, was they were just wrong. It has never been a detriment to my work that it's set in this country. We are a tattoo magazine, so do you have any? Um, if do, do you have any tattoos, or if not, do you have any characters that you would like to see tattooed on people or something related to tattoos that you can talk to us about? Sure. I don't have any tattoos, and it's interesting because I'm of a generation that kind of falls in the gap. Older people, I mean, you used to see sailors and people who've been in the army or in prison who would have tattoos. And younger people have all kinds of tattoos. But I fall into that sweet spot of people who did not embrace that particular art form. I have some friends my age who have them, but it's mostly my younger friends who do. And I have one friend who has a lovely sleeve of, uh, of stuff and down her back that looks absolutely terrific that I kind of uh, co-opted into my novel triggers one of the characters has a very similar tattoo because uh it was just so beguiling to to look at that um i've never had one of my characters i've never seen one of my characters as a tattoo but i did have a guy who came to me and asked me to autograph his uh his upper leg which i did and he went and had the uh, the magic marker autograph turned into a tattoo. So he's got my name going across. And he told me that's what he was going to do. And that makes you nervous, you know, because I'm normally pretty good about having a straight line. And it kind of goes in kind of, and then takes a, a downward turn because I'm like, I'm being so careful, hyper careful that I screwed up a little bit. But he's happy with it on his leg. You know, and I was saying that there's this, this generational thing. Uh, I write a lot about the notion that... Um, we're going to live forever, extended lifespans, radically extended lifespans. Um, I think young people today, I, I wonder why ha tattooing has been so embraced by younger people today, because there, there are only a couple of possibilities. One is that they think, well, there are this dystopian world we're going to live in, we're not going to live long enough to see these things sag anyways, right? Why not look great now? Because I'm not going to be an 80-year-old you know, woman with a... Uh, a tramp stamp, I'm going to be dead long before then. Or the alternative is that they're even more enthusiastic about the future than I am. They're all transhumanists who say, you know what, everybody says a tattoo is permanent. Come on, we can kind of sort of erase them now. We'll absolutely be able to erase them perfectly in 10 years. And in 20 years, we'll all be getting animated tattoos instead of static ones. Why not? Uh, and I think it actually, the old ad omission that you know, oh, don't do that. You don't know what you want, you know, when you're 20s for your 70s. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're going to be able to come and, and go and vacate your tattoos as frequently as you want. I worked with David S. Goyer on Flash Forward, the ABC television adaptation of my novel, the same name. And Dave is a huge tattoo guy. He's got the most amazing sleeves up both arms, but they didn't start as full sleeves. They started with every project that he does. He gets one additional tattoo, and he's uh, got this history of all the things he's done creatively, the Blade trilogy, Flash Forward, now uh, Da Vinci's Demons, his new TV series, the Batman movies that he did with um, uh, you know, uh, Christian Bale and so forth. And each one uh, has a commemorative tattoo. It's just the most remarkable things from what otherwise is you know, a very ordinary uh, you know, uh, looking guy. He's bald like me and he's, he's a little shorter than me. And you're not aware, except because he usually wears long sleeve shirts, that there's just a little hint of color. Then you ask him about them, and it's almost like the the uh, guy with the disguise becoming the superhero, where he doffs the clothes, and you start to see underneath that there's something you didn't anticipate. In his case, it's the most amazing collection of tattoos on anybody that I know. 
You are the first sci-fi author to have a website, blog, a tweets, Facebook, and a whole bunch of other things. Do you have any advice for young aspiring authors on how to market themselves? Well, I was the first science fiction writer in the world to have a, a website at sfwriter.com. you got to get in early to get a URL like that. The number one thing that's irritating is anybody whose sole online presence is, buy my book, please buy my book, I got a new book, won't you buy my book? What you want is to be an interesting person. Uh, reading is a very intimate experience. You're curling up, often in bed, under the covers to be between the covers with somebody, and that somebody is the author. And so your job is to be intriguing, interesting, funny is ideal. Uh, it's okay to be controversial. People are afraid sometimes, you know, if I blog about abortion or if I blog about civil rights or whatever, I'll lose as many readers as I gain. So what? There are 7 billion people. You're going to lose 6 billion, 900 million of them no matter what you do. So you might as well be willing to be yourself uh, and just be interesting and personable in online media. But don't let doing the online media, the social media, become your principal outlet for your writing. Remember that every moment you spend on Facebook is a moment you're not spending on your next chapter. All right. Uh, you have a new book coming out. Would you like to tell us a little bit about Red Planet Blues? Well, Red Planet Blues is out now um, in hardcover. The paperback will be out in April of 2014. It's a hard-boiled detective novel set on Mars. And I wanted it to be both of those things, a science fiction novel, absolutely dependent on rigorous extrapolation from real known science and everything we know about the reality of Mars, and we know a great deal about Mars these days, and a real mystery novel, a real, uh, in that very American subgenre, the hard-boiled detective novel, really an exemplar of that, that, that has all the tropes and things you expect, but have it not just be tacked on, but one being integral to the other and them, them nicely playing off each other. The reviews seem to suggest that I've succeeded at that. So it was a, it was a challenge and it was an exciting one to undertake. Uh, and I'm trying to think if anybody has a tattoo in Red Planet Blues. Um, there are a lot of people who've uploaded into artificial bodies, uh, which of course they can endure and with uh, engraving, which would be similar to having a tattoo, I imagine, in their metal bodies. It sounds really interesting, and I can't wait to read it. Anyway, thank you so much for your time. Again, this is Ali from Geek Inked Magazine, and stay tuned for more coverage of Hal.